In this presentation, we're going to add credit card information through the bank feeds. In other words, we'll discuss how the bank feeds would be set up. And ultimately, we will be uploading data using a CSV type file. We will be providing you with that CSV type file. So here we go with zero. Here we are on our triple G dashboard. We're now going to be adding the bank data for our bank feeds. Let's start off by going into our banking information where we have our credit card information as well, which is the accounting drop down and the bank accounts this is where our bank feed type information is. And if we go then down to the credit card, here is the credit card. If you were to link up the credit card, you would go through the same kind of process we did with the bank. We can want to get the bank feeds and we would link that to the institution and you would go through basically this process to, to go through the link. You're going to have to match up the bank account, have uh, whatever kind of verification process that you would need to go through that and then the, the bank accounts the bank feeds will come into place now as you do that same kind of caveats you have with the uh, bank information the question is how much of the bank feeds do you need if you if it's a new credit card of course the, and you don't have any of the information in your system yet you might just be able to get all the credit card information since inception of the of the credit card if it's a new one and you're good to go however if you're trying to get like a full years of credit card information same kind of thing as with the bank whereas you might be limited to the amount of information as far back as you could go with uh with the bank feeds so in that case uh, you may want to then think about how you can get the other data in some way possibly from downloading it from the financial institution also you want to make sure that you're not double inputting data as well so as you get the bank feeds if you already have credit card information into the system you want to make sure that uh, you're picking up the correct date as of the point in time that you need. Now, we're if you're if you're going to download this information from uh, the institution, this is Wells Fargo. This is an example of a bank, typically rather than a credit card, but same kind of process would apply. You'd want to go online. You want to say, OK, now, since the bank feeds are not giving me the full amount of data that I need or for whatever reason, you want to download the documentation of the feed and then upload it into the system. So if you were to do that, you'd go in and find something like uh, downloading the, the information, downloading the feed, as you would see here. And then again, you would have the same kind of file types that would be uploadable. So the QuickBooks uh, type, the QBO file, will typically work in zero as well. And then we're going to be using like the spreadsheet, kind of simple spreadsheet type thing that you can open in Excel, but it's typically a CSV type format, stripping away the Excel kind of cool stuff that Excel does so that it's just a simple spreadsheet that doesn't, you know, all the cool stuff that Excel does doesn't mess up the coding when you upload it is basically how I understand that as a non-professional uh, technical uh, person with regards to uploading the, that data kind of file. But we, I know how to upload the data file, and so here is the data file we're going to upload. So we're going to have this information. This is going to be our mock data file that we have here. We're imagining that we downloaded this from the bank, and just like with the bank feed information, we got the simple kind of data. We've got the date, we got the description, and we have the amount. So uh, payments are going to be are going to be positive, and then all the negatives are going to be the the money going out. And typically, we're going to end up with a negative balance here which will flip the bank account from up from an asset account to obviously a liability account because the credit card account will show an amount due or a zero balance. This is going to be a CSV file. If you were to make your own data file, you can do so and you could you could save it and just put it in Excel here and then say save as and um, you'd want to save it. And if you download a data file from the bank, you can you could change it too if you wanted to, but it's going to be saved here. You can open it in Excel and then save the file type as a CSV file. So that's going to be the difference. That's what's going to allow us to upload it without the formatting. So I'm going to close this back out. We will provide you with this file so that you can follow along with us. And we're going to we're going to close this out. And I'm not going to save it. I don't need to save this. I don't need to save it. And then we're going to upload it here. So now we're just going to manually upload it. So you could go to the manual import uh, on this side. I believe there's a manual import uh, that you have in the drop down here as well. I think it's this one. We saw it on the bank feeds. I'm going to use this item. So the manual import a statement. Now I just want to jump over to a credit card kind of mock statement just for just to show you here. Obviously, the credit card statement is not going to be the exact thing you're going to upload because the statement like the bank statement will be formatted something like this. And we need kind of the raw data. So we're taking basically the raw data down here. And that's the data that we're going to input. That's the data that's going to be in our CSV file that we're going to be uploading. 
Note the file types that you can use to upload over here. We're going to be using the CSV file type. So these are the ones you're looking for when you go to your financial institution and downloading the data. We're going to go then to browse to search for that CSV file that uh, we want to be picking up here. And I'm going to paste the location up top in my desktop so in my computer. And we want to be picking up the credit card transaction CSV file. So you should have this. I should be, if you're with the course, should be have this provided. There it is, the transaction CSV file. We're going to go ahead and import that. So that should be imported. And then we need to verify the, the headings. So we're going to go back down. And like I say, most of the time, the headings you'll get when you download the file will just have that simple three three heading headings on it. So we have the date, the description, the amount. We're looking at these three headings, just simply lining them up. So we have the date here. That's going to be the transaction date. So we have the description. That's lining up to the description. We have the amount that's lining up to the transaction amount. So this is what's in zero. This is our headings. They're lining up fine. We're going to have this checked off, to, which says don't import the first line because that's the headings. We're not going to actually import the headings. Again, if you wanted to add more information, they have these other fields that you may, you may be able to input. They're probably not going to be there when you just download the data from the bank, but you might want to add them to the CSV file before you input it and import it. And that might make things a little bit easier so you can test that out and check it out. So we're going to go ahead and save this information. It says then that nine uh, statement lines were imported with zero duplicate lines. So that is good. And then we have our information down here again. It has now been imported. So here's our, our information on the left that we imported. Obviously, there's no transactions on the right because we haven't entered any transactions. We're at that same beginning point as with the bank information. This is the reconciling screen within the bank statement screen. We're going to show the bank side of things it has all of our transactions none of them having yet been reconciled same kind of situation as with the bank except that these are all going to be decreases we're not going to have you know the increases too too much and it'll result in a negative balance we have the account transactions then related to the credit card nothing there yet we'll be creating the account transactions as we reconcile the process generating the account transactions through the information from the bank feeds as we saw with uh the the bank account so therefore these these items are kind of in limbo right now i would call them in you know x zero limbo zero limbo because they're in the system but they're not on the financial statements yet and they will be on the financial statements once we approve these transactions that's it for now let's get out of here